Welcome. I'm Heather Van Cura, and today I'm here to share with you at DevOx my top 10 ways to ally for women in technology. So I've been a woman in technology for close to 20 years now. I've been working with the Java community from California, but also traveling globally around the world at developer conferences for the last 17 years. And one of the things that I've come to know is that technology reflects the people who make it. And currently, uh, women make up 52% of the world population. But seeing as that you're working in technology and you're here at a Java developer conference, you're probably aware that the numbers of women working in technology are actually significantly lower than that 52%. It's currently about 70% of the technical jobs are being held by women. And unfortunately, women are usually paid less. But if you were at the keynote yesterday, you also heard one of my key bits of knowledge that I have here in this quickie talk as well, which is teams that include both men and women are actually collectively more intelligent. Their collective IQ actually rises. The group collective IQ of the group will rise regardless of the individual IQ. So teams with men and women on them make better decisions, come up with better solutions, are actually more profitable and more creative. So being that I've been a woman in tech working for 17 years, this isn't actually someone something that I like to talk about. This is something that is a little bit of a risky topic for me. Um, but I believe that the experience that I do have in working with the Java developer community puts me in a unique perspective. And increasingly over the last two years, this is a question that comes up more and more often from men who come to me and ask me what they can do to support more women in technology. And so that is why I put this talk together um, based on my experience in technology. When I first got into working um, in the workforce, working with the Java developer community in 2000, I really did believe that tech was a meritocracy and that working hard was all that it was going to take. And so I worked, put my head down, I worked really hard and believe it or not, I hardly even recognized that I was one of the only women even when I went to conferences. But what I quickly realized was that doing your job will get you absolutely nowhere in technology. And I think this applies for both men and women, especially these days. Working hard and doing the job and being exceptional is what it takes to survive in technology. But in order to thrive, you need to grow your network. You need to increase your visibility. You need to expand your influence. And whether you're a man or a woman, that takes mentors, sponsors, and allies. And so for this talk, I'm going to focus specifically on women working in the workforce, um, what, what you can do to support them. You can do this whether you're a man or a woman. But again, this talk really is targeted primarily at the men who have been coming and asking me these questions. What can you do? And I think it really comes down to these 10 things that I'll share with you today. And first of all, the thing that you can do is think of it as a verb. So think of ally as a verb. So a thing that you do sometimes not a thing that you are. You don't have to do it all the time, but the idea is that we're gonna come up with 10 small micro actions that you can do that will affect a massive change. And you're probably aware this conversation is going on throughout the industry, but I really do believe that talking about it is healthy and productive, but I don't think it's necessarily going to do anything. It takes people being willing to take actions, to be open and to listen. And when you do listen more than you talk, also be aware that you probably will make some mistakes. You probably will some, say some things that maybe aren't taken the way you intend them to be taken, but that's okay. You can continue to try. And remember also to just be straightforward rather than try to be uh, sarcastic or humorous when you try to do some of these actions, especially in the beginning. Oftentimes that will backfire on you. So be simple and kind and straightforward in these actions that I'm going to encourage you to take. A really big um, thing that you can do is be aware of assignment distributions. So assignment distributions in the workforce can take on many forms. Um, when I talk about assignment distribution, I talk. you can often think about it in two categories. So the housework versus the real work. So when you're on a team, be aware of the assignments and how they're distributed on your team between the men and the women. Are you making sure that you're assigning projects to the women that are high pri priority, that are things that are about 
owning the code versus only managing the projects. So think about that in terms of um, assignments and also in terms of just daily work in your um, work office environment, as well as when you're at conferences, being aware of assigning real work and significant work and high value work to not just the men, but also to the women. Creating a friendly environment. You may or may not be aware that the women who are in technology will leave at significantly higher rates than men will leave technology. And oftentimes the common reason cited for this is that women feel like they don't belong. So look for ways that you can create a friendly environment and ask the women questions about their work. Um, so I think oftentimes well-intentioned men will ask questions of women that I think exacerbate the feeling that maybe they're out of place. So questions like, um, where are your children or who's caring for your children? While those may be well-intended questions, they're actually questions can, that can make women feel like they don't belong. So try to ask questions and connect with women on your team on a personal level as a human versus trying to compare them to other women that you may know in your life, um, friends, partners, um, or spouses. And also... Be, be flexible in terms of time that you're spending together and as an informal part of a team. So if you're often finding yourself doing things outside of work, like catching a beer, and you find that the women in your team aren't participating, look at ways that you can shift to things like lunchtime or afternoon coffee. Um, be flexible in terms of the time that you spend collaborating informally, because those are some of the moments when teams really come together in those informal times. So make sure that you're having both the men and the women on your team participate participating in those types of events. And also look at your job descriptions. So oftentimes people will say to me, they don't get the women candidates applying. But if you look at your job descriptions and you often see those with developer roles, especially you're talking about code ninjas, rock stars, all stars, you might be highlighting the beer and um, activities that you may be doing as a culture in your environment. And those are, can sometimes be off-putting to women. So take a look at that and see what you can do in your job descriptions. Tip number five, speaking up. So you can speak up at meetings and in forums and at conferences. So um, some of the major ways where I think um, men can speak up is when women are making suggestions and they're being interrupted. You may or may not be aware of the research that shows that women are interrupted three times more often than men. And often, you know, this may not be intentional, but it is, it is a fact that it happens. So I think this is a prime opportunity for men or women to step in and ask if the person can finish speaking since they were being interrupted. So that's one way that you can do a micro action there. And in similar vein, there's also the case of a woman making a suggestion and then very soon afterwards, a man making a very similar suggestion and taking credit for that idea. So again, in that case, what I suggest is a concept called amplification. So if a woman makes a suggestion and there isn't an immediate acceptance of that suggestion, you can actually step in and say, recognize the idea and name it. And for example, the person by name just had a great idea and then build on that uh, idea with amplification or a question. So that's that's one of the things that you can do in terms of speaking up. Related to speaking up is an intervention. So this would be more of a thing in kind of difficult or inappropriate situations, which, you know, fortunately for me, I don't have a lot of those, but I think I have heard from many women working in technology that they, these situations do come up. So if you see think, something that's inappropriate happening in your workplace or um, at a conference, step up and say something. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a confrontational step up and say something. Oftentimes it can be a redirection into something, a topic that's maybe more appropriate. But I think oftentimes men will tell me that they're not participating in these types of conversations or in initiating themselves, but at the same time, they don't feel obligated to step up and say something or redirect the conversation. So I think this is an excellent action that can be taken and requires very little um, investment from the people trying to support and take the action. Number seven is uh, action related to character traits. 
So in this action, I'm telling you to be aware of this. Um, so there are certain character traits that are proven to be attributed more to women than to men. And you may or may not be aware of these. I've personally experienced some of this in the beginning of my career. So um, one of the words that was actually um, used uh, to describe me uh, was abrasive. Now, I don't see myself as abrasive. I, I basically am the chair of the Java community process. I interact with the Java developer community all over the world. That is my job, to be a community connector. But oftentimes in the beginning of my career, I was described as cold, abrasive, uh, or aggressive. And it's been shown that this abrasive word is a word that's used oftentimes to describe women, but never used to describe men in performance reviews. So I think as a man working in technology, and if you catch yourself um, hearing people being described in this way, you can think about filtering that out and maybe using different words. So I think some of the behaviors that I would mirror when I first started in my career um, were men who were acting maybe in strong um, or being leaders, strong leadership positions, right? So um, those are some words that you could substitute in for aggressive, right? You're being strong um, or abrasive. You're being direct or concise. So be aware of these descriptions of character and try to put in some different words that you might not typically think of. I think one thing to keep in mind is that a woman working in technology, she, she walks kind of a tightrope as I have that here on my slide. So you don't want to be too feminine because then you won't be perceived as effective, but you don't want to be too masculine either because then you won't be likable. So there's this tightrope that um, women tend to walk, walk working in technology. Tip number eight, I think, is essential to encourage norms in the workplace that are putting men and women on a level playing field. And two of the things primarily that I've found while working in technology um, that are behaviors that are necessary to succeed, whether you're a man or a woman, is self-promotion and negotiation. And those two things are not stated explicitly anywhere in job descriptions um, when you start working in technology. And I think oftentimes women are not necessarily prone to self promote. They're not necessarily the ones who are going to be saying, I'm the best to, one to do this job. Or if there's a new um, job rec posted and there's 10 um, requirements for that job, oftentimes what I've seen is men will go and ahead and apply for it if they have a couple of those requirements, where women will only apply if she fits all of those requirements. So it's not necessary to have all of the things listed in a job requirement. And I think explicitly saying that and encouraging women to apply for positions helps to encourage that self-promotion aspect, as well as in the day-to-day -day life or at conferences, being willing to speak up and promote yourself and suggest yourself for higher value um, positions and projects. So be aware of that and actively look for ways that you can encourage women that you work with to self-promote as well as to negotiate. So negotiation in the form of not only salary, but benefits that you may receive in the workplace. So Oftentimes, women will accept whatever they're given um, and aren't comfortable with the idea of negotiation, but negotiation is absolutely essential working in technology, So, and it's not just limited to salaries. So encourage and share with the women that you work with to negotiate and frame it in a way which is not confrontational, but more two people trying to come to an agreement. So um, I think encouraging these two types of activities will play a big role in making them normalized activities in the workplace. And oftentimes that has to be explicitly stated. Unconscious bias is something that you can educate yourself about. I recently come to accept that, yes, I do have unconscious bias. I always thought that I didn't, but the fact is that it's human nature. We all have bias. It's part of being human. We pattern match. We put things in certain categories. And I think just recognizing that fact, you can often stop it in its tracks in terms of describing people's actual behavior versus describing how you feel about something that just happened. So oftentimes you can uncover bias by doing that. So if you find yourself in a situation where there's a conflict, Talk to another party and describe what actually happened and get feedback. You might even need, not need the feedback in that case. And you can also learn a tremendous amount from mentoring someone who's different from you. Suggest women. Um, in my role, I'm um, 
very oftentimes the only female on a panel or in a meeting. And um, what you can do to take these ally steps is not only make things open to all people, but in actively invite, encourage, and follow women. Invite speakers to your panel. If you're invited to a panel and there aren't any women on the panel, suggest women that you know. Actively go out and invite them to participate and follow them on Twitter. Follow them in other social media networks. So you're here and that makes you awesome. Uh, I do believe these small micro actions can come together and make a collective change. Do remember though, you may, you may make mistakes. You may not get the credit that you think you deserve, but any small action really does make a difference. And I believe that my success in technology really has been a result of the allies, mentors, and sponsors that I have had in the tech world. And together we can be the change that we wish to see in changing the ratio between men and women working on the the technology solutions that are being created today that are affecting everyone around the world. So I encourage you to take one of these actions today and you can follow me on Twitter at HeatherVC if you want to ask questions since I've used all of the time here today in our quickie session. I'll be here the rest of tonight. I also have a BOF session tonight at seven o'clock talking about the Java community process so you can find me there. Thank you.